ಕೃತ ನಿಯಮರಹಿತಾಂ ಹ್ಲಾದೈಕಮಯೀಂ ಅನನ್ಯ ಪರತಂತ್ರಾಂ ನವರಸ ರುಚಿರಾಂ ನಿರ್ಮಿತಿ ಆದತಿ ಭಾರತಿ ಕವೇರ್ ಜಯತಿ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಇಯರ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಉಲ್ಲಾಸ ಒನ್ ಟು ಉಲ್ಲಾಸ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ನೌ ದ ಸೆವೆಂತ್ ಒನ್ ಈಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ದೋಷ ದರ್ಶನ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಡೀಲಿಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ ಸೆವೆನ್ ಟು ಟೆನ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ವೆಬಿನಾರ್ ಸೊ ದಿ ಐಡಿಯಾ ದ ವಾಟ್ the first few chapters covered is actually um okay sometimes i will be switching between the screen because i want to look at the text also and since i have sent the link to everybody and all of you have the text you can take up your text uh, pdf at that point of time and uh, look at it uh, i have not typed out the entire text here it's easier to look at the text in the vyakhyanam which you have okay uh so the first few chapters that he deals with in this kavya prakasham is the first ullasa dealt with the kavya swarupam the second had the shabdartha swarupam third is artha vyanjakata fourth is dhvani bhedaha so he there are three types of kavyas the uttama kavya madhyama kavya and adhama kavya four five and six dealt with uttama madhyama and adhama now after dealing with the kavyam he goes on to the dosha now this is all in keeping with the kavya swarupam that he first mentioned in his first ullasa where he says that adosha shabdartho sarguna analankriti punakwapi is his definition of a kavya right so without even knowing what a kavya is and what everything what are the uh, how you can identify a kavya you can't go into what is the dosha so that is why the dosha prakaranam always comes after having a proper understanding of the different types of kavyam and what are all the aspects of a kavyam uh, uh, then you go into the outer part so first understand the atma of a kavyam and then you will understand where each and everything uh, is placed in a kavyam and how it uh, contributes or does not contribute towards the uh, uh, rasa aswada of a kavyam so here uh in the first he just delineates a kavyam saying that it is shabda and artha and that shabda and artha can be of three types lak uh, vachyartha uh, vachaka shabda vachyartha lakshaka shabda lakshyartha vyanjaka shabda and vengyartha so these are the three types of shabda and artha then based on how the vachyartham and the vengyartham are placed you have something called dhvani and in that dhvani also the rasa dhvani is the most important of everything so which means when we read a kavyam we have to give importance to what is the rasa that is being portrayed through that kavyam or when a kavi is trying to write a kavyam he gives importance to that rasa and he has to highlight that rasa at every point or not lose track of what is his main objective which is to give the rasa swada for the sahridaya or the kanashiyas who read or uh, see the uh, drama okay now this rasa being the most important part in a kavyam he dealt with how uh, that that rasa can be uh, understood in as a form of suggestion in the kavyam so that is where he placed of uh, uh, he did his fourth and fifth and sixth ullasa where the vyangyartha is more beautiful than the vachyartha it is the dhvani vedam which is your fourth ullasa and the fifth uh, ullasa had where the vyangyartha is not as good as the uh, vachyartha or it can be on par or it can be a little bit less or it is agudam there he, the, the, all those different varieties were dealt with in the fifth ullasa the sixth ullasa he dealt with the adhama kavya which is the chitra kavya where the vengyartha is either completely non existent or it is not so beautiful at all uh, and he only spends time on the vachyartha showing all different types of uh, um, you know the shabda alankara etc so that is your adhama kavya now he comes to dosham he takes up dosha before guna in the seventh ullasa because his main idea is that for it follows the kavya lakshanam where he starts off with tad adoshau 
tat kavyam tu adosham adosha means it should not have any dosha and that is the primary thing that mammata starts to address okay so if in in de defining the kavyam if he starts off by saying adoshau the kavyam should be devoid of any dosha we have to know what is the dosha first what is defined as dosha what is the definition of a dosha okay so the seventh ullasa starts off with a definition of the ulla uh, dosham and then he goes on to give the different types of dosha now uh, let me give you a small um, idea of what is there in this section you can probably divide it into 10 parts the first section is a very small section where he says the he gives the dosha samanya lakshanam uh, in a karika and explains it it's a very uh, one one karika explanation then he deals with pada doshaha there are 16 different pada doshas vakya doshaha 13 different vakya dosha padamsha dosha vakya matra doshaha artha doshaha after giving all these five different types of doshas the first five different types of doshas because he's going to talk about rasa doshas also later in the middle he says any of these doshas are, are not nityam they can also be a adosha or a guna it can actually be a guna he was he will discuss each and every dosham as not being a dosha in certain contexts i will explain as we come to that uh, section then you have the rasa dosha then rasaadi doshanam api adoshatvam adoshatva pratipadanam then what is rasa virodha and how do you uh, um, uh, try to avoid that rasa virodha okay these are the several topics that he deals with in this prakaranam now uh, if you look at the dosha samanya lakshanam that he starts off with he says uh, uh, kavya swarupam nirupya doshanam samanya lakshanam ah you can look at the text now where he starts off with the first karika and this the line before the karika is always called avatarika where he tries to explain why this karika starts off why he starts off with this karika so kavya swarupam nirupya after uh, describing the kavya swarupa doshanam samanya lakshanam ah there is something called samanya lakshanam and vishesha lakshanam samanya lakshanam is a general definition vishesha lakshanam is a particular definition for example if i say computer it is a you know computer it has a screen it has a keyboard and everything that is a samanya lakshanam if i have to say a vishesha lakshanam for that is it hp what are the specs and all that you go into a particularity that is what he is trying to do so first he will explain what a dosha is then he will go into the different particular classifications and explain each and every lakshanam so vishesha is a particular definition whereas a samanya lakshanam is a general definition of a dosha the karika is mukhyartha hatihi dosho rasascha mukhyastad ashrayat vachyaha ubhayopayoginah asyu shabdadyaha tena teshvapi saha here mukhyartha hatihi dosha that is your definition for dosha dosha mukhyartha hatihi now mukhyartha hatihi i started off by saying how rasa is the most important aspect in a kavya so from that if anything that stops us from enjoying that mukhyartha that which is important in a kavya then it is a dosha anything that stops us from understanding that or experiencing that rasa if there is a problem with that then it is called dosha hmm? it is a fault in a kavya so mukhyartha hatihi hatihi actually means hatihi ityukte hananam hanana kriya means you are destroying something it is not a destruction of rasa as such it is not that we are completely we are unable to even understand rasa that is not the point here he will point out to certain places where uh, the the understanding of the rasa or the experiencing experiencing rasa can have a delay in it 
there will be a vilamba or uh, we will not even feel like you know enjoying that rasa because something in between would have come and you know our minds would have uh, changed there if we are seeing a beautiful play where they are talking about some shanta rasam or something and suddenly someone makes a comedy there the the main rasa the effect of the shanta rasam will completely be gone right that is one portion or you will not even feel like ex, uh, uh, enjoying that main rasa so that is your uh, uh, hatihi so hatihi is more of a vignam than destruction so here mukhyarthaha is rasaha so mukhyartha hatir doshaha is the definition that is the samanya lakshanam and rasascha mukhyaha rasa is your mukhyarthaha that is the most important aspect in a kavya tad aashrayat vachah let me come to that later so hatihi means you say apakarshah apakarshah is there is a certain uh, it hinders the enjoyment of the kavya apakarshah means it comes down utkarshah means there is an emancipation apakarshah is degradation so mukhyartha hatihi you can say it is the degradation of the rasa it happens when the degradation of the rasa happens that is called dosha and what is that mukhyarthaha mukhyarthaha cha mukhyaha cha rasaha and arthaha tad aashrayat vachyaha arthaha so vachyartha we saw in the second uh, ullasa that vachyartha is your expressed meaning what is expressed what is there Uh, uh, suggested is vyanjaka vachya is expressed correct so when you say rasa if, if if the rasa is not understood properly rasa always depends on the shabda and artha which is expressed in the shloka okay that is your vachya that vachya also is a contributing factor to the rasa so tad ashrayat ityukte rasa ashrayat rasasraya rasasya ashraya bhutena vartamanatvat arthah api tatra arthasya api doshah suchyate so here when he says in the next line ubhayo upayoginah shabdadyah for both the vachyartha and the vyangyartha which is the rasa there are several aspects called pada padamsha artha vakya etc which contribute to either the uh, 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 the enjoyment of the rasa or it does not contribute or it proves to be an obstacle to the enjoyment of the rasa so these two are rasa and vachya artha now in this rasa and vachya artha both of these उभय उपयोगिन शब्दाद्या फॉर बोथ दीज द यूजफुल आस्पेक्ट आर शब्द एक्सेट्रा वॉट इज शब्द एक्सेट्रा एक्सेट्रा मीन वर्ण रचना शब्दाद्या उपयोगिन स्यु दट इज अनदर सेंट सो यू हेव अ कपल ऑफ सेंट इन जस्ट दिस वन कारिका द फर्स्ट सेंट यू हेव इज मुख्यार्थ हि दोष फुल स्टॉप next is rasaha mukhyah next is tad aashrayat vachyah now rasaha mukhyah rasaha kama tad aashrayat vachyah ityukte rasa aashrayat vachyartah api kama iti ubhayasya api upayoginah shabdadyah syuh ubhayasya api rasasya vachyasya cha upayoginah shabdadyah syuh tena tena ityukte tasmat karanat because of that reason teshveva saha so teshu ityukte shabdadyeshu eva saha doshaha vartate the dosha is not in the rasa or the, the, that he will talk about later so the for for the first five doshas i showed right pada padamsha vakya artha etc for that aspect we need shabda etc shabda varna rachana and all those and in order the, the rasa and the vachyartha uh, sh, uh, so the dosha is not in the rasa but it is in the shabda etc that's why he says pada dosham padamsha padamsha dosha 
வாக்கியதோஷம் சோ தேஷ்வேவ தேன தஸ்மாத் காரணாத்து தஸ்மாத் காரணாத் ரச உபயோகித்துவ காரணாத்து தேஷ்வேவ சப்தாத்தியேஷு ஏவ சக தோஷா வர்த்தே Now he is explaining that uh, karika. He is just taking out some of the words in that karika and saying hati hi apakarsha. Hati hi means apakarsha, or there is a degradation. Shabdadya ha iti adigrahana the varna rachane. Even the letters that you use, for example, in Shringara rasam, you are trying to portray something which is very soft. You can't use a very harsh word there, correct? Unless the situation demands. you have to think about the situation and see how it is that is why guna the, there is some there are, there are two classifications called nitya dosha and anitya dosha uh, kavi prakashakara mammata does not uh, take it up in his text and say but it is uh, uh, accepted that there are two types of dosha because he is using that uh, um, dosha naam api gunatva pratipadanam is a section that is being dealt with by mammata you have to understand that there are something called nitya dosha there is something called anitya dosha some doshas have to be avoided so nitya dosha whenever wherever you are using those it is a problem like for example vyakarana lakshana vihinam which is called chuta samskriti so if there is if you are not adhering to the rules of the vyakaranam there is no point in writing you can't invent a language and write it here right you are using sanskritam you are writing it in sanskritam and it has to be in accordance with the grammatical rules that have been given in sanskritam or if you take prakritam then it has to be in accordance with the prakritam rules you cannot say i am you know i am creating a new word but even then it has to be within the rules of the grammar so the, that uh, chuta sanskriti is something which is uh, uh, anitya dosha which is a nitya dosha you cannot use a word which is uh, grammatically wrong unless there that is also it is possible at at every point i can i will try at every dosha lakshanam and the udaharanam i will tell you where it can be possible to be a guna okay for example if a teacher if there is a scene in a drama where the teacher is trying to correct the student's grammatical point then you can use the, the wrong grammar and the teacher is trying to point out that the grammar is wrong so the only certain situation warrant such usages okay so dosha is something that has to be avoided hati mukhyartha hatihi apakarshaha dosha so which means what you are saying is rasa apakarshakatvam dosha that is your dosha samanya lakshana okay uh, i'll just recap uh, that one more time hmm? mukhyartha hatihi தோஷா முக்கியார்த்த ஹதிஹி தோஷா முக்கியார்த்த ஹதிஹி மீன்ஸ் ரச அபகர்ஷகத்வ அண்ட் தட் முக்கியார்த்த இஸ் ரச ஹதிஹி மீன்ஸ் அபகர்ஷஹ தத் ஆஷ்ரயாத் வாச்சியஹ ரச உபயோகிதயா வாச்சியஹ அர்த்தஹ அபி தத்ர உபயுஜ்யதே சோ உபய உபயோகினஹ சப்தாத்யாஹ உபய இஸ் ரச அண்ட் வாச்சியார்த்த now the that which is used for both the rasa and the vachyartha are the shabda with which you make the kavyam and that shloka gives us the rasa that gives us the vachyartha and these shabda varna padamsha vakya etc uh, uh, are useful for rasa and vachyartha because of that reason te shveva saha so we are only talking about dosha initially we are talking about dosha as existing only in shabda etc okay next uh, vishesha lakshanam ah now vishesha he said dosha samanya lakshanam uktva aduna vishesha lakshanam ah vishesha lakshanam is he is going to talk about each and every uh, uh, aspect dosha that is there in each and every aspect of the kavya so he starts off first with dushtam padam dushtam padam shruti katu chuta samskriti aprayuktam asamartham nihatartham anuchitartham nirarthakam avachakam tridha ashlilam sandigdham apratitam gramyam neyartham atha bhavet klishtam abhimrashta videyamsham viruddha matikrit samasa gatam eva here uh, this this here he actually talks of um how many pada doshas are there 16 ah yes 
So 16 Pada Doshas are there. Some of them are only Pada Gatam, Samasa Gatam. Now, why he says Samasa Gatam is just as an explanation of this Karika. Each one he is going to define and then give an Udaharana. So a definition and Udaharana. For example, Shruti Katu will have a definition and then he will give an Udaharana for that. Chuti Sam Chuta Samskriti will have a definition and Udaharana. That's how the text is going to go. Now, if you see in that Karika, the last he says Samasa Gatam Eva. Correct? So Samasa Gatam Eva means the last three are Samasa Gatam. So how does the text go? Sandigdam Apratitam Gramyam Neyartham Athabhavet. The sentence ends with that. And then you have Klishtam Avimrushta Videyamsham Virudham Atikriti Samasa Gatam Eva. Only these three are going to be uh, only in Samasa. The rest, uh, starting from Shruti Katu to Neyartha, are going to be for both Padagatam and Samasa Gatam. Why is that? Hmm? Uh, see, if he is talking about Dushtam Padam. Padam is Dushtam or Dosha Yuktam. That is the meaning of that. So when words have a Dosha, it is called a Dushtam Padam. And if a word has a Dosha, in uh, in connection, it will have a problem in Rasapratiti. So everything or either uh, uh, you will not be able to understand the meaning of the shlokam. Hence, there will be a Vilamba in Rasapratiti. Because our Dosha Samanya Lakshanam is, remember that Rasa Apakarashakattu. Everything rests on, a reading of a Kavya rests on understanding that Rasa. Rasa is, as you saw in the fourth Ullasa, Shringara, Hasya, Karuna, etc., etc. Right? So this Dushtam Padam, even if one word is Dosha Yuktam, it will not contribute towards the enjoyment of the Rasam. Now, Padam is not just one word like Rama, Deva, Nayaka is not only Padam. Samasa is also a Padam. Samasa, you, you may think that you no know, Samasa has four or five words in it. Correct? If I say Pitambaraha, Pitam, Pitam, Ambaram are two words that are there. But what happens in a Samasa is you have Pitam, Ambaram, Yasya Saha becomes Pitambaraha. It is actually treated as one word. It gets the Padasamya. Hmm? It has the Padasamya at the end of that. So you have Pitam, Ambaram. When these two words join, you actually have Pita as the Pratipadikam. Pratipadika is the root word. So if I just have to use that word Pita, it is Pitam and that is one word that is done. Whereas here in a Samasa, you are combining these two words, Pita and Ambara. It will lose its, that Am, that Dvitiya Vibhakti or that Pratama Vibhakti. It will lose that. So, and then it will combine with the next word and do a Pitambara. And Pitambara becomes your new root word. Hence, Samasa, even though it has many words and it should be treated as maybe a Vakyam or whatever, it is actually a Padam. Because at the end of the, when you, after you combine all the words, it is given a Samnya of Padam. And it is treated as one word. Hence, Samasagatam and Padagatam. Now, in this Klishtam, Virudha Matikrita and Abhimarishta Videyamsham, when we go to that definition and the Udaharana, you will understand why it is only Samasa and it is not only Pada. It does not have a Padagatam Dosham also. Because in Abhimarishta Videyamsham and all, you have to have two aspects, two words which will complement each other or which will be connected with each other. And that is how the dosha is going to be understood. So here, Shruti Katu, Chuta Samskar, Samskriti, Aprayuktam, Asamartham, Nihatartha, Anuchitartha, Nirarthaka, Avachaka, Tridha, Ashlilam. Ashlilam is of three types. Vrida, Jugupsa and Amangalam. We'll, again, he will give us the uh, uh, example, Sudaharanam for that. Tridha Ashlilam, uh, uh, but I've taken it as only one here. Sandigdam, Apratitam, Gramyam, Neyartha. These 13 can be both Padagatam and Samasagatam. Whereas Klishtam, Avimrishta, Vidayamsham and Viruddha Matikrita are only Samasagatam. Okay. Now the first uh, um, dosha is Shruti Katu, Parusha Varna Rupam Dushtam Yatha. 
uh, the text that I have shared, the link that I shared, has a very beautiful uh, arrangement. So you have the first dosha within bracket. He gives the numbers, and you can follow those numbers, and it is easier if you have the text on hand. Shruti Katu. What does that mean? Shruti Katu. Katu is Parusha. Parusha Varna Rupam Dushtam Padam. So Shruti Katu Tvam Yatra Vartate Tat Padam Dushtam Padam. So if that word, the word that you have used is very harsh to the ears. Shruti Shravane Katu Yat. So if it is very harsh to the ears, it is called Shruti Katu Dosha. This is an Anitya Dosha. This is not an Anitya Dosha. Please note down. Because uh, uh, this Shruti Katutvam becomes a Guna in Raudra Rasam or Bibatsa or Bhayanaka or uh, um, Veera Rasam. It is actually you need that Shruti Katutvam in those uh, Rasas. Whereas if it is used in Shringara or Karuna, Shanta, it is, na, it is a Dosha. Now here the context is a Shringara. Uh, Purvaka Shloka Ananga Mangala Grihabanga Bhangi Tarangitaihi Alingitaha Saha Tanmangya Kartarthyam Labhate Kada. Now, the moment I said that word, whether it is Shringara Rasam or any other Rasam, Kartarthyam is a word that immediately sounds very harsh to the ear. It is not a very soft like Ananga Mangala Grihabanga Bhangi Tarangitaihi. That goes very smoothly, as I say, also. And the moment I come to this part, Alingitas Satanvangya, until that it is okay. Alingitas Satanvangya, Kartarthyam Labate Kada. Even I have to take a pause and try to say that word. That's why it is very harsh to the ears, also. So, Shruti Katutvam Doshaha. That is easy. Let me also explain the shlokam. Only then will you understand that in a Shringara Rasa, this word is uh, uh, hindering that rasa anubhuti. Main sentence here is saha tanvangya alingitaha saha tanvangya alingitaha saha kada kartarthyam labhate. Uh, so you have an ayaka here who uh, uh, or someone else who is talking about this nayaka. I don't know when this nayaka will uh, or uh, an Aika can be talking about it. I don't, she, she may be saying that, uh, when, when will I see him? So with my eyes, I want to, with my Kataksha, I want to see that man. And I don't know when he will be uh, embraced by me. So Kada Kartarthyam, Kartarthyam is a word which is Kritarthasya Bhavaha Kartarthyam, that is satisfied. When will he attain satisfaction or fulfillment of his desires? He who is being embraced by Tanmangya, by the beautiful lady. So it can be a third person who is saying the shloka. Or it can be a lady who is thinking about her uh, uh, lover in this manner. So Ananga Mangala Grihapanga Bhangi Tarangitaihi Alingitaha. She is not physically embracing him. But he is being embraced by the apanga tarangitaihi, by the graceful uh, uh, looks that come from her eyes. So that graceful looks, her eyes are like ananga mangala griha. Anangasya mangala griha eva apangaha. So the eyes are or the glances, apanga is glances, which is very beautiful, bhangi, bhangi. Tarangitaihi and waves. Tarangita is literal meaning is waves. Here you have to uh, um, uh, say like she keeps on looking at him constantly. So it is like it is approaching like waves. The glances are like waves. So the uh, glances which are uh, like the temple for Mangalagraham. Mangalagraham is an auspicious house of Manmatha, Anangaha. Manmatha's uh, temple is this Apanga. So her apanga, which can give out the feelings of love, that is her apanga. And the glances that come out of her eyes are bhangi, beautiful, and tarangitam, waves. See, if you're directly looking at someone and staring, that doesn't convey the love. It is not a graceful glance, right? So it has to come in spurts, like a wave. 
if the water is still it is just stagnating and it is not so nice or beautiful so when the waves come it's more beautiful look at the to look at the ocean it means you will be wondering when the next wave will come so even with the lady's glances you will be wondering when next time she is going to look at you she will probably look at a few things and then look at uh, the uh, guy so that way that is why they are comparing those glances to waves okay so ananga mangala griha apanga bhangi tarangitaihi so which means it it only describes the kataakshaihi saha saha nayakaha tanvangya by the lady who is tanvi tanvi ta, tanu angi so the one who has a very slender uh, um, parts of her body so tanvangya by the lady alingitaha saha being embraced by that lady kada kartarthyam labhate when will he attain a fulfillment of his desires kritarthada bhavet kada bhavet here it's it's a, a, a nayaka when will he, he the, the fulfillment of his desire is to be embraced by that lady so even that is being very used with a harsh word and that harsh word when you hear that karthartyam you will immediately be trying to understand oh why is this word here it is a very harsh word and all that so the moment you hear that word that pratikula varnam will not give you the madhura rasam which is necessary for shringaram whereas it is very necessary for raudram the moment you hear that word it will uh, uh, produce a chitta vistaram and you will find that it gives you that ojas gunam you will read about the gunas and all in the eighth tulasa huh? Uh, and that uh, ojas gunam will contribute to the krodha rasa uh, uh, raudra rasam or even veera rasam for that matter this is more appropriate for that than the shringara rasa which is the prakrita rasa okay so shruti katu parusha varna roopam dushtam yatha ananga mangala griha apanga bhangi tarangitaihi alingita satanvangya karthartyam labhate kada now the next one is atra karthartyam iti so mamata just says this is the dosha point that's why we need to look at uh, the vyakhyana once in a while to understand hmm? uh, the poet has the, the alankarika has no uh, problems in understanding the shloka nor the place where the dosha is so he just gives it in one word we we have to use our brain to understand it now the next one is chuta samskriti vyakarana lakshana heenam yatha he gives one big shloka where the, it's the the problem lies in just one small word there etan manda vibhakva tinduka phala shyamodara pandura prantam hanta pulinda sundara kara sparshakshamam lakshyate tat pallipati putri kunjara kulam kumbhabhaya abhyarthana deenam twam anunathate kucha yugam patravritam makrthaha chuta samskriti means vyakarana lakshana heena so it is devoid of any vyakarana lakshana it goes against the rules of vyakarana first let's look at the meaning of the shlokam and then look at the dosha etan manda vipakva tinduka phala shyamodara apandara prantam pulinda sundara kara sparshakshamam hanta lakshyate a, a very uh, let's say uh, an intelligent person is looking at a beautiful young woman she is a palli pati putri palli is, is a gramam uh, and that uh, grama adhikari palli pati hi uh, so grama adhikarinah putri eka uh, puratah vartate so she is standing in front she is very beautiful to look at now uh, this uh, this person want also wants to admire her beauty generally the ladies who are all in the uh, forest they have no lajja they do not have uh, any shyness and uh, they they roam around without their upper bodies covered okay so here when they uh, when they are among their Uh, um a set of people you know these adivasis or people who are in the forest so they all uh, are not very um, shy about covering their body but the moment someone comes from outside 
he they they will immediately cover their body with a patra putta so the the he palli pati putri kucha yugam patra vritam ma kritha ha do not cover your uh, uh, breasts your upper body patra vritam ma kritha with a leaf so don't cover yourself with a leaf is what this uh, person is saying now he is he does not want to directly say it then don't do this i want to enjoy it's a gramyam then it will become a very uh, uh, um, uh, you know uncouth manner right so he says it in a very different manner in the sense he says what i see in front of me is actually slightly uh, white in color and it is uh, uh, with the uh, black in the middle like a tinduka phala tinduka is the type of fruit which is white and dark in the middle so etat that which i see in front of me is manda vipakva it is slightly ripened tinduka phala it is like the tinduka phala which is slightly ripened shyama udara which is dark in the middle and pandura prantham which is a slightly white in the uh, on the outside and how it is is pulinda sundara kara sparshakshamam lakshyate so this is the first sentence and it is sparshakshamam it is uh, fit to be touched by a pulinda sundara a very handsome pulinda pulinda is a shabara or a hunter handsome hunters would love to touch this what i see in front of me hence tat uh, now uh, what he is saying is kunjara kulam kumbh abhaya abhyartana dinam now these hunters are all trying to hunt the elephants that are there so they are all very uh, um, brave hunters who are there in this palli the in this grama and those hunters are capable of fighting with the elephants now to fight with the elephants they will have to hit the mastakam the kumbh of the elephant the forehead of the elephant and this forehead of the ele- elephant resembles the uh, uh, bosoms of the lady so it says all this herd of elephants that is there they want to protect themselves they want to protect their forehead so kunjara kulam the hasti kulam the gaja kulam kumbha abhaya abhyartana dinam uh, in order to protect their uh, uh, foreheads abhyartana they are praying dinam in a very pitiable manner to you twam anunathate they are asking you or begging you anunathate means they are praying to you in a very pitiable manner in order to protect their kumbha kumbha abhaya abhyartana dinam twam anunathate it is a kriya visheshanam that is dinam anunathate he is the the, the kunjara kulam that is the host of the samuham gaja samuham is begging you in a very pitiable manner in a very karunam way what are they asking please don't cover your uh, body because it is uh, the the hunters who are wanting to kill us you know the moment they see you see the beautiful form of you they will immediately want to come to you and enjoy you rather than killing us so he is imagining a scene where the hunters are going to kill the elephant the elephants are begging this beautiful lady so don't cover yourself because as soon as they see you they will stop trying to hit us and kill us and they will want to enjoy you okay now here you understood the shlokam right so etan manda vipakva tinduka phala shyamodara pandura prantam pulinda sundara that's why he uses sundara pulinda sundara karasparsha karasparsha kshamam kshamam means yogyam so it is fit to be touched by the hunters and that's why he says don't cover it lakshyate kunjara kulam he palli pati putri kunjara kulam kumbh abhaya abhyartana dinam tvam anunathate it is begging you tat tasmat karanat kucha yugam patra avritam ma krutah patra avritam patra aachaditam ma krutah now here atra anunathate iti now the problem word is anunathate hmm? nathate actually uh, is an atmanepadi word where sarpishah nathati is actually parasmepadi if you have to use it in atmanepadi 
you have to use it only in the meaning of ashihi which is hope so sarpishaha natate ityadau ityadau iva ashishi eva nathatehe atmane padam vihitam ashishi nathaha iti ashishi nathaha is a vartika that is there in panini's uh, sutra so panini sutra is there and vartikas are additions that have been given uh, by uh, katyana so um, ashishi nathaha nath is the root word which is a dhatu that is in parasmepada but Na, ashishi nathaha is a vartika where he says um it's not in parasmepada i'm sorry it is in atmanepadi yogi anudatta id hmm no there some people uh, have a problem with that okay let's uh, leave that but the idea is here ashishi eva atmane padam iti so nath dato ho ashishi means hope where you ashasmahe you know you are uh, i'm hoping that i get sarpihi sarpihi sarpishaha nathate means uh, sarpihi ma me bhavatu iti asha asti mama so he is hoping for getting ghi in that idea he is using the word natha the verb natha in the meaning of hope and that is when you have to use it as atmanepada otherwise when you use an upasarga natha has to be in parasmepadi so he has to say anunathati anunathati kucha yugam patravritam ma krutaha so tvam anunathati is should be the right word so here anunathate the usage of atmanepadi is uh, uh, vyakarana viruddham hence chuta samskruti is the dosham here okay so atra anunathate iti sarpishah anathate ityadau iva ashishyeva nathatehe atmanepadam vihitam only in the meaning of ashishi or hoping uh, uh, asha that is the idea where nath dhatu can be used in atmanepadam vihitam atmanepada has been enjoined for the nath dhatu only for ashishi the meaning atra tu yachanam arthah here it is gaj samuhah tvam yachate ityarthe eva upayukta so yachanam arthah tasmat anunathati stanayugam iti pathaniyam it has to be used as anunathati but the poet has said anunathate hence there is a dosha called chuta samskruti here it is an nitya dosha okay next third dosha is aprayuktam tatha amnatam api kavibihi na adrita aprayuktam is that which has not been used amnatam api amnaye yuktam api uktam api amnayam means in either the you know there are many different koshas that are there like amara kosha hemanta if you look at malinatha's vyakhyana he will quote n number of koshas i don't know where he has that brain and all that kosha must be there in his brain right so he talks of some four five different uh, kosha not only amara kosha amara kosha is only iti amaraha he will say there are so many different other koshas also he quotes now many words exist in these koshas which is a compendium of the different words that are there in the sanskrit vocabulary now amnatam api amnaye uktam api which is shastre uktam api even though it has been said in the different amnaya kavibihi na adritam it has not been anushasane uktam api kavibihi yat na prayuktam tadeva aprayuktam iti dosha so the, the uh, people have not been used kavis have not used it even though it has been uh, said in the amnaya for example padmam is used always in napunsakalinga by kavi but in the sha, kosha you find that pumsicha it has been used he is used uh, the mamata gives us very similar example here let's look at the udaharanam yatha ayam darunaacharah sarvadeva vibhavyate 
तथा मन्ये दैवतो अस्य पिशाचः राक्षसो अथवा श्लोक इज अ वेरी नाइस श्लोकम यथा अयम दारुण आचारः सर्वदैव विभाव्यते सर्वदैव ऑलवेज ही सीम्स टू बी यूजिंग वन वेरी वेरी क्रूएल एक्शन दारुण आचारः दारुणः भयंकरः आचारः अस्य वर्तते सर्वदैव विभाव्यते विभाव्यते संभाव्यते वी वी आर एबल टू सी हिम यूजिंग अ वेरी क्रूएल प्रोसीजर ऑलवेज सर्वदैव यथा जस्ट एज वी सी दिस सो आई थिंक मन्ये आई थिंक अस्य दैवतः पिशाचः राक्षसः so definitely his ishta uh, devata uh, must be either a pishacha or a rakshasa pishacha is a ghost a rakshasa is an asura so either an asura or a pishacha must be his devatam no santva you know shanta devatam could be his see whenever i use the word it is devatam is what is coming very naturally devatah is the problem word here hmm? so his ishta devata he must be a pishacha or a rakshasa because he is constantly doing only uh, actions which is daruna now here atra daivata shabdaha daivatani pumsiva so vrindaraka daivatani pumsiva vrindaraka devaha so daivatam is the, a word that has to be used only in napunsakalingam daivatam daivate daivatani pumsiva so it can be also used in pullingeva it is an option that has been given in the amara kosha in the uh, anushasana or any other kosha but kavibihi na prayuktam iti pumsi amnatah api iti pullinge anushasane ukte api even though it has been said that it can be used in pullinga na kena chite prayujyate no kavi has used it in pullinga just like padma पद्मम भाति पद्म सरोवरे इन साहित्य दर्पण ही गिव्स दिस एग्जांपल भाति पद्म सरोवरे पद्मम इज ऑलवेज यूज्ड इन नपुंसकलिंग नो कवि हैज यूज्ड इट इन पुल्लिंग बट द अमरकोश सेस पद्मह पुंसिवा द सेम एज दिस दैवतम दैवतानी पुंसिवा इन द सेम मैनर सो इफ समवन you know looks up only that's why you it is not kavya uh, uh, shikshaya abhyasa the first uh, first ullasa you must have studied that shaktir nipunata loka kavya prayojanam asya prayojanam uktva karanam ah in the first ullasa you must have read shaktir nipunata loka shastra kavya vyavekshanat काव्यज्ञ शिक्षयाभ्यास इति हेतु ततुद्भवे इन दैट ही एक्सप्लेन्ड द फर्स्ट ही सेज शक्ति ही निपुणता सो इट्स इट्स एन शाका लोक शास्त्र काव्यादि आवेक्षणात यत निपुणता सो यू हैव टू लुक एट लोकम एंड काव्य शास्त्रम आल्सो यू हैव टू लुक एट व्हाट द कवि हैज यूज्ड देन ओनली कैन यू राइट अ काव्य सो टू राइट अ काव्य व्हाट इज द कारणम दैट यू नीड kavi prayogah is absolutely important that is why the dosha arrives i have read all shastras i know vyakarana shastram i know panini uh, 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 right from vridhi radesh to a uh, a uh, i know all the sutras and its applicability i know the amara kosha but still if you do not if you have not studied mahakavyas it is impossible to write a adosha kavya so that is why he stresses these doshas much more than guna guna he will only talk about 3 or 4 or 10 that's it anybody whereas the doshas he will talk about 50 different doshas right so kavya shastra avekshanat kavyaadi avekshanat is very important here so aprayuktam relies on the fact that you have studied different mahakavyas in the mahakavyas none of the kavi na kena chitu prayujyate none of the kavis have used daivata as a pullinga shabda daivatah hence here you have to say tathamanye daivatamasya pishacho rakshaso athava hmm? this is also a nitya dosha hmm? uh, next one is asamartham yat tad artham pathyate na cha tatra asya shakti yatha this is also very similar to um, aprayuktam in the sense 
um but there's slight differences it is a combination of both the aprayuktam and chutta samskriti in in essence there are many verbs if you look at the verbs and dhatu paata panini has said the meaning of each and every dhatu uh, gam gamane gach you know gamalr gamane and uh, uh, all that if you um, many people have studied it with that i have not had the opportunity to study so i don't know it off hand here himsa uh, uh, hanti is a hana dhatu is a word that has been actually we we all know hanti means to kill hananam uh, hanti and all that we have only understood it in the meaning of killing but if you look at the dhatu paata he says hana himsa gatyo ho himsa gatyo ho gati gati means gamanarthe gamanarthe api hana dhatu ho patitatvat but you cannot use hanti in the meaning of gamanam saha hanti the moment i say saha hanti you can only think of oh he is killing someone whom is he killing kasya maranam abhavat tatra nobody is going to say kutra agachat saha okay so hanti is a verb that immediately gives us the meaning of killing and not gamanam but dhatu paata if you look at dhatu paata padini has given the meaning of gatyartha for hana dhatu now it is based on that you can't only look at dhatu paata and write a shloka ha huh? so asamartham yat asamartham is a dosha where tad artham patyate nacha tatra asya shakti even even though the meaning has been given there the shakti shakti means the meaning of it asmadarthat ayamarthah bodhavyah iti ishvara ichcha shakti that is tarkaka tarkika will define shakti as that from this word i will get only this meaning that is what has been ordained for that word so many words have been read in a certain meaning but you cannot use it as is by looking at the dhatu paata okay let's look at the udaharanam and then i will explain it further to mean what the shakti is so teerthantareshu snanena samuparchita satkriti hi sura sna uh, su, sura srotasvinin eshah hanti samprati sadaram now here uh, teerthantareshu snanena sna, uh, teer, uh, snanena teerthantareshu uh, samuparchita satkriti hi eshah so samuparchita satkriti hi eshah samuparchita satkriti is an adjective to eshah eshah samprati sura srotas srotasvinin sadaram hanti your anvayam of that uh, shloka is this now teerthantareshu someone who has attained punya by going to many different teerthasthala kshetra he goes to a lot of kshetras and by taking a bath there snanam after taking snanam there snanena by taking a bath teerthantareshu in many different other teertha kshetras uh, samuparchita satkriti he has attained satkriti he has attained a, uh, punya punya vishesham samuparchitam he has attained punya eshah now what does he do samprati sadaram with a great respect sura srotasvinim sura deva srotasvini nadi deva nadi is ganga so gangam prati eshah gachati adhuna sarveshu teertheshu sthanena krita punya eshah gangam prati aduna gachati sadaram so hanti is being used in the meaning of gachati okay now pada uh, so here what what is the problem here is atra hanti iti gamanartham but hanti even though dhatu paathe hana himsa gatyo ho has been said he actually uses that only for uh, making words or noun forms of uh, you know like prahata or uddhata jangha if you look at the word jangha jangam yate no gha means hana hana is being used in the meaning of uh, gach there where the knee uh, helps us go in a uh, um, 
up and down manner you know it is uh, the janga is the one which gives us that flexibility right so we are able to flexibly go because of the existence of that knee and in that word jangha you have that gha which is ha hanadatu and hanadatu only when it is used to make noun forms of uh, certain words along with pratyaya then that hanadatu can have the meaning of gati it cannot be used directly as lat lakara lang lakara or anything as a verb as hanti cannot mean gachati you cannot use it like that that is how the word has been used in the vyakarana the same way um, you will have ing ing is a dhatu ing adhyayane ing is a dhatu which is used in the meaning of adhyayanam or reading adhyayanam right so but nobody uses it as ite ite means pathati it does not come you cannot use it at all so shaktihi tatra na vartate the shakti means you, it cannot be used in that manner you can only use it with adhipurvakam eva so now if i say saha vyakaranam adhite now the word seems familiar correct adhite means adhyayanam kurute pathati so adhite it in dhatu can only be used along with adhi which is a pratya an obasarga it cannot be used in any other sense it is not capable of denoting adhyayana without the adhi in the same manner hana dhatu does not have the capability of conveying the meaning of gati unless and otherwise it has another pratyaya which has been used with it and made it into a noun form or something else so here aprayuktam uh, sorry asamartham asamartham samarthyam na vartate yat yatra artham patyate han dhatuhu atra gamanarthe patyate kintu gamanarthe han dhatoho tatra shaktihi na vartate okay so we have seen four types of doshas here pada dosham we'll stop with this and any questions you can raise your hands or you can send me uh, on whatsapp and uh, i will address it before the next class okay next class is on thursday